many subreddit trolls predetermined that I would skew my R5 versus i5 benchmarks by as much as 20%, because that's what Intel shills do, right? So in a civilized fashion, I've decided in this video to compile a bunch of data gathered by other tech tubers whom I regard as 100% trustworthy in an effort to either validate or invalidate my claims made in this video here. I'm doing this just to appease the fanboys. In any other case, I'd just run my own benchmarks like I always do, but this is what it's come to. Isn't that sad? So let's start first with a few websites and move on over to the tech tubers. I regard PC Per PC Perspective as one of the leading technical review sites on the World Wide Web, so we'll start with their benchmarks. First up, an AMD pump title, Ashes of the Singularity here in DirectX 12. Without a doubt, the 1600X does outperform the 7600K point blank. Three frame difference here, there's really not much to argue with, but is that really surprising? Civ 6, a virtual tie, 7600K edges out a very narrow win. Same goes for Deuce X. Now for Far Cry Primal, the i5 7600K jumps a whopping 20 FPS ahead of the 1600X thanks to its clock speed and just optimization in general, and the Lock 7500 squeaks out a narrow win as well. Ghost Recon Wildlands, same story once again. We also can expect the same from Hitman being an AMD title to favor the R5, and that's exactly what it does. Here's another one, Grand Theft Auto V, a game I personally test quite a bit here on the channel. Similar settings as the others, 1080p and the 7600K easily takes the cake, even the locked i5 outperforms here by nearly 8 FPS. Does this sound familiar? Remember, IPC is a big deal. If you ask me what I've seen so far in my own tests and just tests from others that I do trust, the 1600X will fall in line somewhere around a locked i5 from Intel Kaby Lake. Now I know that sounds too bad to be true and then you know a lot of the AMD fans are just going to automatically dislike the video because I just said what I just said, but it's the truth, and you're going to find that out once you start seeing these Ryzen 5 benchmarks roll out. AMD's already confirmed Ryzen 5 specifications, consisting of two CCXs, those are clusters of four Ryzen cores. What this means, since we know the 5 series will only have six and four core variants, is that one or two cores within each complex will be turned off, essentially. Think of these as cores that didn't pass the mark. But what this also means is that these Ryzen 5 CPUs are essentially Ryzen 7 CPUs from an architectural standpoint. Let me show you a few examples. First up, GTA 5. You can see in 1440p, very high settings, how things are fairly close. The 6700K edges out a narrow win, but drop to 1080p and that lead dramatically improves. This is the nature of CPU scaling. At lower resolutions, the chips with stronger individual cores will pull forward, all other things equal. Now let's throw the 7600K into the mix. This is just a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU. Boom. Still considerably higher frame rate than the 1700X in 1080p, and this is with all 8 cores enabled. I'm emphasizing the 1080p resolution because it's by far the most common resolution in which people game today. Even Witcher 3, which heavily leverages the graphics card, favored ever so slightly the 6700K. Ryzen 5 will likely offer better value chips in the gaming space, but don't count on any of them to outperform a comparably priced Intel i5 in modern games. It'll be close, but it won't you know, won't be a blowout. It'll be close, but it won't, you know, won't be a blowout. It'll be close, but it won't, you know, won't be a blowout. But let's bring up a conflicting case, since many, many benchmarks are already on the World Wide Web in regard to this matchup, the R5 versus i5 matchup. With Anantech.com for GTA 5, the 7500 loses to the 1600X, 5 FPS margin in this case, something to consider. Many of you did point out the discrepancies in benchmarks, and I definitely can hear you, just keep in mind that many different platforms do exist, and different RAM frequencies, things like that, can vary your frame rate by quite a bit. And Antec's other GTA 5 benchmarks at varying resolutions and with different graphics cards most of the time end up with the two chips being neck and neck. So let's throw in the results of a few fellow YouTubers. I enjoy watching Paul's hardware, let's use his first. According to his test, the 7600K loses in 1080p to the 1600X by 2 FPS in GTA 5, and is crushed on 1% and 0.1% lows. That's important for frame stuttering if you're not aware of what those actually indicate. Great news for R5. And his Civ 6 results show the i5 losing here as well, in conflict with PC Per. In fact, one of the only instances in which the i5 wins is Witcher 3 which is already known to leverage the GPU anyway. Now let's head on over to Brian's channel at Tech City. I enjoy talking to Brian, the dude's down to earth, and he calls things like he sees them. In his case, as with many others, any GPU bottleneck is removed with the 1080 Ti, so this is virtually a CPU versus CPU showdown here. Battlefield 1 goes to the 7600K with its mere four cores, so does Mafia 3, and even the AMD champion Hitman. Now let's run through Kyle's benchmarks over at Bitwit. A win for the i5 in Ashes, Battlefield 1, Doom, and 
and GTA 5 and Hitman and Watch Dogs 2. So what the heck is going on here? Why are, in a few cases, the R5 chips outperforming Intel's best i5 CPUs in benchmarks where for a majority of the time the i5 is coming out on top? That's the point I want to tackle first. I don't know where a few of the fanboys are getting their data, but from the people that I trust, the i5 is still managing narrow wins on a majority of titles. This is just a fact. It doesn't have anything to do with value. It's just objective data. But a few reviewers are getting different numbers, numbers that do favor AMD instead. Now I want to stress that this is no attack on them. I 100% trust every reviewer I included in this video. That's why they're there. I just want to point out that there are many variables to consider when it comes to reviewing a CPU. The GPU used in tandem, how much RAM, the frequency of that RAM as we've recently learned, SSD or hard drive gaming, overclocks, it all adds up and can shift FPS by a few points here or there, but that's enough to change who comes out on top. Now as for the verdicts I made in the previous video, because after R5 benchmarks released a ton of people came over saying I expect you to apologize you were wrong are you gonna throw up an apology video I wasn't wrong and that's what I'm confused about and that's why this video exists I'm not gonna run my own benchmarks because I think that a majority of you fanboys out there are gonna think that I skewed them it's sad that you think that I don't want you on my channel if you do think that but if you happen to be watching this video You've seen the results from other tech tubers. You know, I've also included the ones that conflict with the uh, ultimate consensus that the i5 is still the IPC king and therefore the gaming king. As for the subreddit trolls, your ignorance has been duly noted. But here's what else I'll stand by. Ryzen 5 is a better lineup from a value standpoint, period. It appears many of you confused that with what I was saying in the claims video. Objectively, the higher IPC of the i5 pulls it ahead in most games, regardless of the number of threads optimized. What is so difficult to understand about that? These are facts and you can find on a majority of websites. Battlefield 1 is an example. Even though CPU usage is near pegged at 100%, Kyle and Brian's benchmarks resulted in a small lead for the 7600K, which has less than half the cores of its 1600X counterpart. But, and this is a big but, <laughs> from a value standpoint, it makes, in my opinion, absolutely no sense right now to buy an Intel i5 CPU. Given the fact that Ryzen 5 and its price point matches the i5 lineup, you're getting a heck of a lot more cores, almost identical gaming performance, and a heck of a lot more of a punch when it comes to video editing and rendering, things like that. So you have both sides of the aisle being played to on the Ryzen bench, but you don't have that with Intel. For Intel, for i5s, you can, you can video edit and do all that, no problem. I've done it before on a 6600K, but I do recommend for just an all-around CPU, if you plan on doing a lot of gaming and streaming and video editing and rendering, Ryzen 5 on a budget is the best bang for the buck lineup right now. I think it's completely eradicated the i5 series from a majority of buyers' minds. Now for those who bought an i5 before R5 or even R7 was released, don't fret, you're fine, and you didn't waste your money. I wouldn't recommend switching platforms, that would make no sense, it'd be just a side grade basically, but don't buy one now. If you're looking for a CPU now and you want to pay around 200 bucks, consider R5 strongly. From a productivity standpoint, my 1700X doesn't bring much extra to the table that my 6700K can't, so if you're looking for around a $300 CPU, that's a different story, but for around 200 bucks, you can't go wrong with any of these R5 AMD CPUs. So with that, here are my two conclusions regarding the R5 versus i5 debate. One. KB Lake i5s are still outperforming comparable R5 CPUs in a majority of titles. This is a fact, but it is barely a fact. But two, who cares? The R5s bring value to the mainstream. I never argued that from the beginning, but apparently people misconstrued that. And I hate to use this term, but it's true, it is more future-proof. Small FPS differences aren't important in that sense anyway. For both budget gaming and productivity, Ryzen 5 is the way to go. Intel would have to lower their i5 prices by around 50 bucks or more across the board before I'd ever consider buying one again at this point. I'm not looking to appease anyone I previously pissed off, I frankly could care less. I'm also not looking to piss anyone else off that I haven't already, that would be nice, I don't want everyone at my throats, but I do have a feeling that many people from the blue and the red teams will be kind of grunting behind the scenes. Look, these are, these are facts and my opinions based on those facts. You don't have to agree with my opinion, but the fact still remains that i5 is barely a winner, but that the R5 lineup is without a doubt the better value. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite, click a subscribe button if you haven't already. I'd like to give a special thanks to all of the tech tubers and website tech reviewers who have contributed in an indirect way to the creation of this video. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.